Hey man, it's Kevin Smith. Hey, this is Jay Music. Hey, I'm Scott Snyder. I'm Cena Grace. And you're listening. You're listening to. The- and you're listening to the Absolute Geek. The Absolute Geek. Absolute Geek. Absolute Geek <laughs> podcast. Check it out, Snugins. I took a good comic topic of the week, um, and you know, you don't. When you hear about this happening, you just kind of shake your head and think like, who could do something that stupid? But uh, I, I've, I've heard a couple. Let me introduce you to Corbin. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've heard a couple of people have had this problem recently, and that is uh, proper storage of your comic collection. Oh my God! Wow! <laughs> yeah, I'm tuning into this. So let's hear it. <laughs> After so my seen, collection, I'm ready. Yeah, we've kind of hit on this before, and uh, we 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 got to throw. You know, we're throwing a little shade at Corbin, but you know, we we feel sorry for him. So. Um, Thank you. We we ha- hate to talk about it when it happens. It's like a you know, a dead army man type thing um, when somebody has this happen. But he recently mm-hmm. had a uh, you lost your collection to a water heater burst. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Um, I don't really remember. The, like I wasn't there for when it happened, but I had all my books kind of stacked along the along the wall. I, I kind of had the back part of um, the house. I'm basically. Not going to go to a living situation, but basically, I have the back part of the house, and um, I have my books had a whole, you know, my trade paperbacks in one box, um, and it was mostly plastic, which is fine, but they weren't especially tall, which is why, you know, when the ensuing damage happened, everything was destroyed. And then I had my um, comics, you know, sorted out by character in other boxes, kind of along the same wall, the same format. Um, only problem was I wasn't the biggest believer of bagging and boarding. Oh, Oops. Yeah, which is to say that I had a big you long box. Savage, that like, you savage! I see that now. I see that now. Part <laughs> of it was just that in my head I was like, "I'm a reader. I don't need to bag and I'm just gonna pick them up and read them, and you know, I handle them delicately enough, and whatever, and what have you." And then another reason was I just didn't want to bag and board every single one, um, and that was just a lazy route. But I paid for it because not a thing survived except um, for a signed copy of Batman Gotham by Gaslight, and. Um, another um, uh, Elf Quest book that I had signed and put basically separately um, by my bookshelf. Well, so, we can yeah. get into two, two little things here. Uh, one of them being um, <laughs> not bagging and boarding your books. Uh, some people have, you know, different views on this, but I will say one of the most important reasons to bag and board your books is because when you keep your books in a long box, not bagged and boarded, they'll fold. Um, they'll, they'll, they'll get... The damage to them just because of how they want to naturally rest um so you're gonna even no matter how delicate you think you are with your comics you throw them in a long box and they're not supported by a bag and a board they're gonna get damaged and we all have been through long boxes you know you go through like a collection at a store and like they picked up some collection and there's just books after books not bagged and boarded and they're just destroyed um so I will say there's a lot of people, and I understand, if you're a reader and you don't care about condition at all, yeah, more power to you. You do what you want with your collections. But if you do care about condition and, and if you want, you know, to for that comic book to last, <clears throat> throw it in a bag and a board, get it supported, um, and most importantly, if you're worried about flooding. But here's the thing about flooding. Mm-hmm. Uh, the most important thing you can do with your comic boxes are keep them off the ground. Uh, yeah. Now what? Oh man. And, and and I feel your pain. You know, I gave you a little shit in the beginning, but I've had this happen too. I kept my when I moved uh, out of my uh, first house that I was in out of, out of my parents' house. I when I moved into that house, I put all my comics into storage, and they were probably in there for ten years or so. And I had a full run of uh, Alan Moore's Swamp Thing, just beautiful, and. Oh. When I put the comics in the storage unit, those comic boxes were on the bottom, and they I didn't put them on. You know what people usually do is they'll get like a a two by four or or, or some plywood and put that on top of some cinder blocks, um, and then put it in a storage unit. And I wish I would have done that because a flood happened, and those bottom it was only the bottom boxes, but those all those got basically ruined. Even with the bags and boards, they were ruined. So um, it's always good to have your books up high or you know put in a closet if you can that that way you don't you're not going to get if a flood happens especially in a basement and your sump pump goes out or something happens um mm-hmm. you have a little bit of chance of getting 
your comics and not destroyed. Um, then we can get into uh, a little bit about uh, what you guys keep your comics in. You know, we talk about short boxes, long boxes, but I just wanted to start a little bit, giving Corbin a little little crap and uh, <laughs> let him tell his story. But um, how do you guys? How do you guys keep your comics? Uh, we know how Corbin keeps them. Where do you guys keep your comics, uh, Jose and Matt? Oh man, I keep mine in a in a closet, a spare closet, um, in long box, long and short boxes. Jose, long boxes, bag and boarded. If they're special, then I put in mylar. Okay, but where where are your long boxes? Um, I have. I think they're all. Yeah, they're all in the closet. You what almost closet? had the one, the one behind you, or is that the the dungeon closet? No, it's behind me. You, okay, you cool. I just a... wanted to find out for when I go rob your house. <laughs> <laughs> you almost had an issue like that too, Jose. When you had a pipe burst in your house, and your your comic collection almost got flooded. Actually, one box got water in it, but since I put bags and boards, I had to worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are some new cool boxes that are out uh, that BCW makes. They're those plastic boxes with those lids that fold in that basically keep it nice and tight. Uh, not airtight, but it's harder for water and stuff to get in them. Um, so if, if you're able to get those and, and it's something that you would like, they also have really nice boxes, the same type of boxes for graded books. Um, and I'm actually looking at getting some of those for some graded books uh, just to be a little bit extra safe. But I do this. I, you guys see, you know, comic boxes behind me. I'll I'll play, you know, on that edge sometimes, and I'll have comic boxes behind me. But my personal collection, my Grail stuff, and it's it's in an area where I'm not going to have to worry about anything but a fire. Um, and what we, what we should talk about towards you know a little bit about this is insurance and stuff like that. And I would be very interested in the. Um, we'll probably do a little bit of research into that because that's something that I would like to look into um, about insuring our collection. Because some of us, you know, you have a fire, you lose this stuff, and no insurance company is going to pay for it. Um, so that's something that we'll look into in the future. But we just kind of wanted to, to talk about, you know, what happened to Corbin and ways to stop that. Uh, you guys got anything else? So Michael says in the chat, bagged and boarded in short boxes in the closet, key issues. I have designated drawers in my nightstand for them. That's a good one too. And then you have uh, Chad who says, "I want to invent a wrap like shrink wrap for file boxes." So that that wouldn't be a bad idea too if you never really wanted to get in there. If you just wanted to keep a collection sealed. But what a lot of people do that I see is, what's the now? What would you recommend the difference between like? I see a lot of people um, storing their books in like custom made wood short boxes or uh -huh. like filing cabinets. I've, I know a couple of people that have like filing cabinets that just have pull out drawers and they, they have their comics um, arranged there's that some, way. There's some filing cabinets that I really like to be able to do that with. And those are the ones that where the drawer doesn't pull out long. It's a long drawer that pulls out and you can put the book sideways in it instead of long ways like this mm -hmm. those are really cool because you can put like short stacks of books across the whole thing and they they line up perfectly in there um i don't like the long file cabinets with the long drawers that pull out just because you know it's leverage and it just doesn't work what you did talk about though is a lot of people are doing these custom you know wood built uh same type of filing cabinets type things where they're on rollers and they have acrylic fronts, and you could put nice boards on the front, and then you could... I mean, there's some really cool stuff. You could get down rabbit hole, holes on Pinterest and Instagram about, man, you know, comic caves and stuff like that. And there's some guys out there doing some really cool stuff. Um, and if you can get into that custom building stuff, there's some cool stuff to do. So, um, yeah, that's, that's cool. That's very cool. So, uh, and then you got Kyle from Area 51 that says... Uh, I don't store my comics. I just throw them away when I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Only oh, when he wants to create them. Yeah. Uh, so. Chad says, yeah. I use a file drawer, file box style. The shrink wrap would work for the outer of the box and then another for the inner sleeves files. Shrink wrapped, access and waterproofing with bag and board. There you go. So I guess, yeah. I guess the, the main takeaway from that, Corbin, just to help yes. you out is for <laughs> for future reference 
let's let's make sure you're not a heathen and just bag and board those comics, all right? Did you learn nothing? If you learn nothing else from Brody Bruce and Mallrats, you learn that you keep your comic books bags and boarded. Right. I, I, you're right. I should have learned that. And guess what? I've, I've started picking my collection back. Started last weekend with uh, you and Kyle Matt, and uh, everything is bag and board so far. Okay, so yeah, we're doing good so far. Keep them bag and boarded. I wish I'd gotten Brian's uh, message about a week and a half. Well, actually, two and a half weeks ago. And I, I know, it. man, it's it's rough. I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. We all know. We all know <laughs> that thing. So, yeah. but um, one thing that uh, would be interested in in, in knowing is, um, how many books did you have? Uh, flaw, like just regular non trade trade books. Do you know? I last I I kept um uh basically like a spreadsheet. I had six hundred and twenty. Oh man, that's heartbreaking, bro. And like it, it just it was dumb. I mean, a lot of them were I picked. I have a my local comic dealer um has a whole bunch of like fifty centers, like older issues that aren't you know that aren't really valuable, but they're good stories. And like I said, yeah. I like them. so a lot of stuff from the eighties. I was really getting stuff from the nineties. Um, a lot of Just League International. Um, basically two whole sets of the Marvel um official handbook, things like that that I really enjoyed. But I had full sets and I had runs and everything separate, which makes it even probably more stupid that I didn't bag and board them. But you got to understand most of them are already collected. And I was like, I really don't want to go into all of this. And it's dumb. I paid the ultimate price and went like the closet with everything was wrecked. Fortunately, most of us clothing, but then the second half, that whole left side right next to the heater stupidly was all of my books. And I don't know why I didn't think that that would happen, but yeah, 620 by last count. That's not including all of the trades and ones that I bought that I hadn't updated. Um, so, and that's well, including yeah. everything you just bought from Phoenix Comic Con too, right? Yes, that was especially annoying. Yes, I had a Frank Miller, um, um, RoboCop, Omnibus. I was really big on. I picked up several different uh, singles, um, like loose issues, um, Power Ranger stuff, oh, everything. That entire haul, my Venom Omnibus, over seven hundred dollars in merchandise. Well, you know, one of the things that uh, that's good about having such large collections and running into really cheap stuff is um, we can give stuff away. So you uh, do us a favor and uh, shoot us over some of the stuff that you lost and uh, any of us have anything that we could shoot your way, we'll definitely do so. Oh man, y'all are awesome. Yeah. yeah, we'll put it out to the listeners too. Guys, um, this is what this community is all about is helping people when they lose their collection. So if you guys have doubles of anything or, you know, anything that you, you don't want anymore or that you're willing to part with, hit us up and we'll get you in contact with Corbin and let's see if we can get some of this stuff replaced for the dude. Cause that, that is shitty when that happens. Mm -hmm.